Congratulations on purchasing the Intelligent Training System, the world's smartest live fire extinguisher training simulator. Prior to the first system use, check for leaks in the propane supply hose, regulator, and fittings by attaching it to a 20-pound propane cylinder and performing a leak test. To do this, locate a 20-pound propane cylinder in a safe location. Thread the propane fitting on the end of the propane supply hose into the cylinder. Tighten the fitting with the hand wheel until snug. Be sure the regulator is in an upright position. Slowly open the stem valve on the propane cylinder. Use a store-bought solution or mix equal parts of mild detergent or liquid soap and water and apply the solution to the connectors of the propane supply assembly. No bubbles should appear. If bubbles form at these connections, a leak is detected. If a leak is detected, immediately turn off the gas and contact Bullex for assistance. After the initial leak check, gas leak check should be conducted annually. If at any time during the operation of ITS you smell propane, shut down the system, turn off the propane supply, and call Bullex at 1-888-4-BULLEX. ITS should be used to facilitate live fire evolutions as part of a comprehensive fire extinguisher training course. Fire extinguisher training should consist of an educational component and a hands-on training component consistent with applicable standards and government requirements. When setting up the intelligent training system, be sure to select an area that is clear of pedestrian and vehicle traffic. If using a parking lot, be sure to close the entrance prior to setup. To get started, Position the intelligent training system on a non-combustible level surface with adequate distance from any combustible materials. Remove the protective sensor cover, then inspect the complete ITS system for any signs of physical damage. If any physical damage is noticed, do not use ITS and call Bullex customer support for assistance. Plug the male end of the black controller cable into the connector on the rear of ITS and connect the other end into the handheld controller. Then attach the yellow power cable to the connector on the rear of the ITS unit, but do not plug in the other end. Place the 20 pound propane cylinder 10 feet behind the ITS base unit. Use propane fuel only. Do not use natural gas or any other type of fuel with ITS. Thread the propane fitting on the end of the gas hose into the cylinder. Remember that propane fittings have reverse left-handed threads Tighten the connection until snug with the hand wheel. Connect the quick disconnect end of the propane hose to the inlet on the rear of the ITS base unit. ITS must be located at least 10 feet from any other propane gas container. Slowly open the stem valve on the propane cylinder. The propane supply assembly should be visually inspected for any damage prior to each use of the appliance. Fill ITS with water to the overflow cutouts on the side walls of the burner box. Use the measuring cup provided to pour water into the burn box. The water keeps the system cool, protecting the electronics and valves. Be careful not to pour water over the pilot assembly or into the burners. Fill the burn box to the overflow cutouts. The overflow cutouts and water line can be used to level the system. The feet on ITS can be adjusted both up and down by simply turning them. Ensure that the water line is just below the overflow cutout on both sides of the burn pan. Now that ITS is level, add more water once again until it starts to flow over the side overflow cutouts. Once the ITS system is leveled, filled with water, and the handheld controller is plugged into ITS, along with the yellow power cable, plug the other end of the yellow power cable into a 12-volt receptacle. A 12-volt receptacle in a vehicle or power pack may be used to power ITS. If a vehicle is used, there is no need to keep the vehicle running continuously. We recommend that for each two hours of use of ITS, you run the vehicle for 10 minutes to recharge the battery. You must have the handheld controller plugged into the base unit before plugging in the power cable. Once the unit is powered up, the handheld controller requires that you enter a code on the buttons to ensure that all users have been trained on the use of the system. With the ignition button released, turn the selector knob to full. 
press and release the flare-up button. Then turn the selector knob to A, press and release the flare-up button. This will enable you to start ITS up. Incorrectly entering the sequence will lock up the controller and require ITS to be reset by unplugging the yellow power cable for five seconds and then plugging it back in. ITS was designed to teach people to properly use extinguishers, including how to maintain a proper distance from the fire. Trainees should stand no closer than 8 feet if they are using a 5x or 7x smart extinguisher, and no closer than 6 feet if they are using a 3x smart extinguisher. It is helpful to mark a line on the ground to prevent the trainee from getting too close to the fire while the extinguisher is discharging. Ensure that there is no pressure in the extinguisher by squeezing the handle and discharging the remaining air or water. Unscrew the headstock and remove it from the extinguisher. Hold the extinguisher cylinder upside down and dump out any residual water. Place the funnel in the extinguisher and fill the smart extinguisher with the proper amount of water. The 3X smart extinguisher is filled with one liter of water. The 5X smart extinguisher is filled with four liters of water. The 7X smart extinguisher is filled with six liters of water. Recharge instructions can be found on the rear smart extinguisher label. It is important that the smart extinguishers are filled with the proper amount of water. Smart extinguishers should be filled only with clean water and compressed air. Overfilling the extinguishers with water will reduce the effectiveness of the smart extinguishers. Screw the headstock back until snug, lining up the hose with the nozzle clip. Using the provided air chuck and the Schrader valve on the extinguisher headstock, fill the extinguisher to 100 PSI. Compressors set to 100 PSI or compressed air cylinders regulated to 100 PSI should be used to fill the smart extinguishers. Watch the gauge while filling the smart extinguishers. Do not fill the extinguishers past the 100 PSI mark in the center of the green area on the gauge. The smart extinguisher will need to be refilled only with compressed air after each discharge. Refill the smart extinguishers with water every three discharges for the 3X five discharges for the 5X, and seven discharges for the 7X smart extinguisher. All smart extinguishers should be recharged with compressed air to 100 PSI after each discharge. The four circular sensors on the front of the ITS base unit are ultrasonic sensors. They pick up ultrasonic sound waves that are too high pitched for the human ear to detect. The smart extinguishers have been specially tuned to emit an ultrasonic signal that the sensors can detect. Based on the signals picked up by the ultrasonic sensors, the onboard control system can sense where the user is aiming the extinguisher and determines how well they are sweeping. The onboard control system then varies the propane control valves to the two main burn zones. If the user aims at one side of the system, the flames will be reduced on that side, but will continue to grow on the other. This is an exaggerated example of how ITS responds to the smart extinguisher. If the user stops discharging the extinguisher too soon, the flames will reignite. If the user sweeps too slowly, the flames will go down but will not be fully extinguished. Also, if the trainee aims directly at the sensors below the base of the fire, the fire will not be extinguished. Instead, the flames will grow larger. The trainee must aim and sweep properly at the base of the fire for the flames to be extinguished. During the training evolution, the fire intensity is constantly varied based on where the user aims and sweeps the smart extinguisher. At any point in the training evolution, the flare-up button may be pressed to return the fire to full intensity and further challenge the trainee. The flare-up button can be used at any point during the training evolution and up to three seconds after the fire has been extinguished by the trainee. The operator has the option of changing the difficulty of the system. Changing the difficulty will determine how easily the fire can be extinguished. There are four difficulty levels, one through four, one being the easiest, four being the most difficult. To change the difficulty settings, hold down the flare-up button with the ignition switch released. After two seconds, the change difficulty menu will appear on the display. While continuing to hold the flare-up button, use the selector knob to change the difficulty. Release the flare-up button and the difficulty is set. You may then select the class of fire with the selector knob. The difficulty level will be shown on the display. The system will default to level two upon setup or reconnection.
Because the flames are controlled electronically, ITS can change how the flames will respond to the extinguisher to simulate different classes of fire. For example, when ITS is set to simulate Class A fires, the flames grow and decay gradually. Class B fires can be knocked down quickly, but also flare back up when not fully extinguished. Class C fires require more extinguishing and slower sweeping techniques. To change the class of the fire, simply change the selector knob to the desired class of fire. If the selector knob is set to full, the sensors will be disengaged and the flames will not respond to the smart extinguisher. To start a training evolution, ensure that all personnel are a safe distance from the system. Press and hold the ignition button to light the system. The ignition button is the square button with the red background on the controller that reads, hold to run, release for e-stop. When the ignition button is pressed, you will hear a short beep indicating that the pilot flame is igniting. When the pilot flame is recognized, you will hear a warning tone indicating that the main burners are about to ignite. The first ignition of the system after setup may take as long as one minute as the air in the system and the propane supply hose needs to be purged. When the main burner flames are at full, you will hear a series of short beeps indicating the start of a training evolution. The system starts the timer and begins sensing the smart extinguisher when the short beeps are heard. This is when the trainees should begin their training evolution. The trainee should be instructed to aim at the base of the fire. ITS will sense where the trainee is aiming and will vary the flames in response. If the trainee aims at the flames and not at the base or does not sweep correctly, the flames may go down, but they will not be extinguished. To successfully extinguish the flames, the user should aim directly at the base of the fire. If the trainee aims too low and directly hits the sensors, the fire will grow larger until the smart extinguisher is properly aimed at the base of the fire. If the trainee successfully extinguishes the fire, the handheld controller will display the time it took to extinguish. This number can be used at your discretion for standardization of training or setting minimum requirements. The system will automatically shut down if the fire has not been extinguished in 30 seconds. If the trainee does not successfully extinguish the flames, the ignition button may be released to end the evolution. The ignition button acts as a dead man safety switch. The flames can be shut down at any time by releasing the ignition button. To shut down the system after training, release the ignition button, then turn off the stem valve on the propane tank. Using the hand wheel, unthread the propane fitting from the propane tank. Unplug all cables and coil them properly. Disconnect the quick disconnect from the rear of the ITS unit. After waiting 15 minutes from the last training evolution, drain the water from the burn box by loosening the drain cock. Use caution, the water will be hot. Then replace the sensor guard and after the water has drained from the burn box and ITS has completely cooled, pick up ITS by the handle on the rear of the unit and allow any residual water to drip out. Thoroughly dry ITS using a clean cloth before storage. Wipe down any soot that may have accumulated on the system with a cloth and water. The components can be placed in carrying cases for safe storage and transport. Be sure not to transport the smart extinguishers pressurized or assembled. The life of ITS will be prolonged if stored indoors. Be sure to store the propane cylinder outdoors in the appropriate location. The following suggestions are offered to enhance the training experience. Limit class size to extinguisher discharge capacity for the most efficient results and fill the extinguishers between class sessions. Place a compressed air source nearby and use a table or the ITS transport case to recharge air in the extinguishers between each trainee. Allow trainees to team fight a fire at a higher difficulty setting. Challenge the class to score better than a certain threshold. For example, Everyone extinguishes a Class B Level 3 fire in less than 12 seconds. Have a competition for the best performance. For troubleshooting assistance, refer to the user's manual or call 1-888-4-BULLEX. Your system comes with a detailed user's manual which includes suggested maintenance procedures and troubleshooting tips. 
If the pilot is not igniting, it may be flooded. Release the ignition button, wait until the propane clears, and try again. Ensure that the valve on the propane cylinder is in the open position. Ensure that the propane hose quick disconnect is fully engaged at the rear of the ITS unit. Ensure the igniter is sparking by listening for clicking when the ignition button is held down. If no clicking is heard when the ignition button is first depressed, refer to the troubleshooting guide in the user's manual or call Bullex for assistance at 1-888-4-BULLEX. If the handheld controller is not receiving power, the LCD display will not be lit or display any text. Ensure that all cables are securely connected and check that the green LED light on the power cable is illuminated. The power cable may need to be adjusted in the power outlet or refer to the user manual for the fuse changing procedure. ITS comes with a limited warranty on parts and workmanship for one year from the date of delivery. This coverage may be augmented with an optional service package. If you experience any difficulties with ITS at any time during the warranty period or after, do not hesitate to call Bullex Customer Support for assistance at 1-888-4-BULLEX. We would like to take this opportunity to thank you for choosing Bullex, the leader in smart fire safety and security technologies. Our goal is to provide you with state-of-the-art training simulators that support your efforts to enhance safety and security.